Hello, welcome back to Profiles. Today we have Adrian Toby from Groundhog, and we get to learn more about him, how he's gotten to where he is, and where he plans on taking Groundhog in the future. Welcome, Adrian. Thanks. Uh, thank you for having me. Pleasure yeah. to be here. I'm glad to have you. I'm always excited to have a conversation with you. You always have exciting things to say and you're always working on. So thanks for, for joining. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, looking forward to talking a little bit about kind of what, what we're up to and uh, seeing how we can help some people. Cool. Well, let's start with uh, talking about kind of how you became Groundhog and where you, where you started from your past, like how you got there. Yeah, so it all started uh, just over a, a year ago is when we actually started putting our the Groundhog Project together. Uh, during that time, I had just dropped out of university. I was going to the University of Toronto for computer science. And I was in my third year. At the same time as, do, as doing university, I was working in the digital marketing agency. We were responsible for implementing mostly Infusionsoft for small businesses in our local community. Uh, and some out west in Western Canada. And we were pretty good at that. We were the largest certified partner organization in Canada at the time. Uh, we had literally worked with hundreds of companies and, and built thousands of marketing campaigns and funnels with Infusionsoft and various other tools like ClickFunnels and WordPress and whatnot. Uh, and I was doing that at the same time as going to university. And what as were you was, studying? I was doing computer science, so computer science, coding yeah. and software architecture design, all, all of that good stuff, runtime efficiencies, the, the building blocks of, of a typical like, software developer. Okay. And as a result of doing a lot of Infusionsoft work and working with WordPress, uh, several pain points kept uh, resurfacing over and over and over again. Uh, one of the biggest pain points that we had to solve at one point was that Infusionsoft web forms, collect first name, last name, email address. The default module that Infusionsoft offered to put code for web forms on your website was straight out of like 2001. Mm. So like we're trying to implement this software in 2018, 2017, and like the world of web design has moved far beyond uh, what they were offering in terms of their uh, their web form tool for at, for design and for implementation and it was just really 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 bad so my first product was actually called formlift i did uh, produce and still produce a wordpress plugin called formlift that allows you to connect infusionsoft to wordpress pretty seamlessly and totally redesign and restyle the infusionsoft web form code that they provide so it makes it easy for uh, you as a non-techie person or non-web developer to link up WordPress to Infusionsoft in just a couple of clicks. And that was my first kind of like foray into the web development, web design, marketing automation world. Uh, and my first experience kind of building a product. That was, that was my first product that I've ever sold kind of like from start to finish. Uh, usually as a digital marketing agency, the product that you sell is other people's products. You're right. You're very familiar with how to, how to sell other people's stuff because that's kind of like your job. You know, whether it's training or courses or, you know, hey, hey Adrian or Paul and Nancy or Training Business Pros was the name of the agency and still is the name of the agency. They're still around. Uh, it was like, hey, hey, Training Business Pros, we have this course that we want to produce and launch. Can you sell it for us? It's like, yeah, we know how to do that. And then we go ahead. And then it's always like a case of the shoemaker's son. You never, you're never as good as selling your own stuff as you are other people's. That's just mm -hmm. kind of like the way that agency work goes. So it was interesting to kind of delve into it and sell like our first homegrown product that uh, we got to produce and we got to develop and we can kind of like make the decisions around. If, you're, if anybody's listening who's familiar with an agency, uh, with the agency model and doing agency work, it's often, you know, there's, there's a lot of back and forth in between uh, creative decisions made by the business owners and creative and marketing decisions want, that want to be made by the agency. <laughs> and sometimes right. those don't reconcile. So it's nice to be able to kind of just like, it's like, all right, this is what we think is going to work and this is exactly what we're going to do. We don't need to get permission from anybody to do it that way, which is kind of cool. It is really nice, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I started, I was, I was doing Formlift for two years. So I started that in my first year, late first year of university, early second year of university. 
And then in third, in my third year, I had built it up to about, it's about, it's around a thousand users now. So it's not like a huge audience. Infusionsoft in and of itself is a, is a smaller audience. Uh, and then the WordPress subsection of that, because not all Infusionsoft people use WordPress. So then there's a smaller subsection of people who use Infusionsoft that use WordPress as well. So, and I have like a little piece of that pie. So I built it up to around a thousand users and was making modest income around anywhere from 40 to $60,000 a year. Uh, on its own minus expenses and all that stuff. That's just net revenue, not necessarily net profit. Mm -hmm. uh, my salary was more than that. So I guess you could really call it, say that. <laughs> it was a loss. <laughs> it, was, it was a loss on the whole. It, bro it broke. We can say that it was close to break even. Uh, but it really, it showed us that, you know, it was definitely possible to produce and manufacture a product that people would buy, people would enjoy, and people would continue to pay yearly licensing fees for and do support. And like, it was a viable business model. And obviously it is a viable business model because uh, the way that I did Formlift is I took the business model right out of easy digital downloads. You know, you get your, your freemium plus add-ons. So we had a free product, product on the .org and then we built all of these different extensions for it like to save your submissions or additional styling features or you could do payments at one point. Uh, and we added all of these additional features. People could buy them and bundle them together and uh, make it a really, really powerful piece of software that you could just drop on your WordPress site. So I took all of my experience from Formlift and at one point there kind of came like a critical, a critical point where we're trying to do all of these crazy ninja moves with Infusionsoft and WordPress and Formlift and trying to make it all speak together. And it's, we started to just think it would be way easier if we just had like our own software that we could make the decisions and, you know, fix the problems that we don't want and, and just make the pain points go away with making WordPress speak to the CRM and the email marketing form uh, and the e-commerce component to just make all of those pieces of your digital marketing technology stack work together in a seamless harmony and have the birds sing and the sun shine and the clouds part. And it was, it was just really, really difficult to do that. We wanted it to be so easy and it, our clients were having just as much of a hard time as we were because we would take on a client and then they would either say, Hey, listen, you know, we're happy with what we have now. And then they try to continue on the process by themselves or hire someone internally to manage it. And then they, it was just way above their head in terms of understanding. Uh, they would need to spend months, maybe to years actually learning digital marketing and how all these different pieces of software work together. And then you mentioned, well, you have to connect the rest API to that. And it's just like, Whoa, 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 you lost me. So we ended up just, uh, and that's kind of just where the, the project started. Uh, we needed to scratch our own itch and we built an MVP and we launched it uh, in, I want to say, October of 2018. And for those that don't know, an MVP is minimal viable product. Minimum get. viable product, yeah. So we had like a minimum viable product ready. It's come a long way since then. Uh -huh. uh, we launched that in 2018, I want to say October of 2018. Um. And we've been growing ever since then. Yeah, I, mean, I would say. I mean, going, it seems like you guys are doing quite a lot over there now. So in the beginning, when you were scratching your own itch, I assume that you probably did a bit of research to see what else existed and um, before you actually started, or did you just say, screw it, I'm just going to make our own? I, well, definitely did a little bit of research first. So the, the, at the time, the only really comparable solution for a self-hosted WordPress plugin CRM, because we wanted to go WordPress. Uh, simply because in the agency, all of our clients used WordPress. Uh, they all used WooCommerce and they all used Contact Form 7 and they all used, you know, the, 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 your pretty standard WordPress plugin tech list. Like they all used the same stuff. So if we, we made a plugin that could install in the same place as all of those things and then speak seamlessly to all of those different things and integrate it all together, then that would kind of be like the gold at the end of the rainbow. Like that would be it. Mm -hmm. So we looked for something, obviously, that did that first because it's way easier to just buy software than to build it. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, and the only, the only, we only came close in the essence of just like hooking stuff up with Zapier and the only self-hosted CRM uh, for WordPress specifically was Zero BS CRM, mm -hmm. which at the time did not have a marketing automation or email marketing component at all. So that was kind of like a no, that was a no-go because it just didn't have what we were looking for. Uh, there was also like stuff like Mailster and, and whatnot, but those were mostly just like 
newsletter plugins. Mm -hmm. You'd collect the list and you'd be able to send out an email, but there's no segmentation. There was no tagging. There's no CRM. There's no funnel builder where you could actually build out customer journeys and automation, all of this stuff. So it it was like, all right, well, it looks like we're going to have to build it ourselves because it, it doesn't exist. And it exists in software as a service applications. I mean, there's, right. there's at least like 30 of them now or like 40. We, we, I, we, last year in December, we went through and built up a pricing comparison sheet. And I think there's 20 something CRMs and marketing automation tools alone on that sheet. But the thing is, like, all of them are software as a service products, Mm -hmm. like all of them. So it means like monthly fees and your bill goes up as the number of people on your list goes up or the number of emails that you send per month goes up. So it's all kind of like it's different. And again, the varying degrees of how they integrate with WordPress is sometimes leave a lot to be desired. Uh, The only real solution at that point is if you have something like WP Fusion which acts as like a gateway between WordPress and a lot of WordPress plugins and uh, your CRM. So that's yeah. kind of like, that's, that's again, that's the closest comparison to what we would be able to offer you is if you had WP Fusion and a CRM with all of your WordPress plugins. Uh, we off, kind of offer for a lot of our integrations the, the option to remove WP Fusion from, from your tech stack, although WP Fusion is actually a supported integration right, at right. the same time. But <laughs> but you leave an option to remove it, you said? Well, I mean, just from, like, you don't need it, essentially. Okay. So okay. if you have, like, our WooCommerce integration and Groundhog on your site, you don't need WP Fusion to connect WooCommerce to your CRM because we offer that. that stuff. Yeah, we yeah. offer that as part of our, our actual solution. Cool. I would imagine, like, I have uh, some familiarity with WP Fusion. We have it installed on a couple of our sites, but I don't know that I'm quite using it well. Uh, but the essential thought, I think what I see is it's mostly about tagging, like being able to communicate between the two different... Pretty much, yeah. yeah ...integrations and tagging. So most CRMs and marketing automation tools use tagging in order to tell you certain things about a contact record uh, and segment them in place of something like lists for MailChimp. So you'd be able to reference a group of people via a certain tag. And generally when you apply a tag to somebody, it can start or stop certain automation, maybe remove certain permissions or uh, provide certain like membership access levels. So most marketing automation tools and ourselves use tags to uh, essentially segment these contacts into different groups of people and do different things. Uh, And uh, WP Fusion, the way that they do it is if someone like buys a product, you can apply a tag to this contact. We'll start this marketing email series in uh, the CRM, essentially. Right, right. Yeah. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about where you have plans for Groundhog. Now, so I guess, first of all, from our last conversation, you've integrated quite a few new features. Is there any features that you want to point out that you've added recently that would make sense? Yeah. So a part, part of what we're trying to do for the end WordPress user is simplify the kind of steps to being able to collect your first payment or send your first email or uh, get your first consulting client or we just want to make that process into actually getting up and running as short as possible. So a lot of our things have been to make as many features of the setup process within WordPress as possible. Uh, That means removing as many components of software as a service as possible because often technology is one of the largest barriers to being able to collect uh, and, and, and grow your business and build a following and collect money and all this stuff. It's technology is always the biggest, the biggest roadblock. There are other roadblocks, for example, product and marketing and all that stuff, but technology can often solve a big number of those problems that you experience. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the new features that we have are focused on bringing the whole tech stack and the whole technology, technology experience within WordPress to make it as seamless as possible. For example, calendars. So uh, you sent me, uh, what's your calendar plugin? That you use? Uh, Harmonizely. Harmonizely. Just purchased so, that on AppSumo. Yep. <laughs> I, I personally use Calendly because that's what I got set up with in the beginning because we didn't have a calendar integration. Uh-huh. Uh, but now we have a Google Calendar integration that you can just install mm. on your website <laughs> and you can get your calendar going, collect uh, 
appointments. It'll add those appointments to your Google Calendar. Uh, and it's quite slick. We have a Zoom integration for that as well. So it'll create the Zoom appointment and everything. Uh, we also have our own payments. Serious? Yeah, we also have our own payments solution as well that works for both PayPal and Stripe at the moment. So when they can actually book with the payment, like you can yeah, collect they can even the You can do uh, book with payment. Uh, oh and this gosh. isn't just for calendars as well. This is, you can set up subscriptions for maybe like a consulting thing. So if you have maybe a Dang. membership, you'd be able to just load up an order form, put your product in there. Uh, it's a full uh, kind of like checkout solution. And you can just drop that on any page, any landing page that you want, start collecting both recurring and one-time payments uh, through that platform, which is really neat. And I'm gonna have to dust my groundhog off, maybe give him a little <laughs> bath and get back in there and start using some <laughs> of these tools. Yeah, so That's I mean, awesome. and again, so, some, some of these tools are like for, are, are again, just to help you kind of get off the ground and get started as quickly as possible, right? A, a, a lot of the times it's gonna end up, you're gonna end up graduating to something maybe like a little bit more sophisticated like WooCommerce or easy digital downloads or whatnot. Uh, but if you're like a, a, like a, you know, you're new to marketing automation and you're overwhelmed with the amount of technological knowledge you have to have to connect all of the dots together, uh, we essentially at this point provide a complete solution for you to just install and plug and play with our ex inbuilt extensions to get and maybe a consulting agency or sell an ebook or do whatever in literally maybe a couple of days, if, if not less than that. Man, that's awesome. I, I wish yeah. I had known that. I mean, I can get a refund on that thing. It's quite slick, so I, I can't wait to try yours out because I, I think it'd be even more slick to have it all integrated within the dashboard of my website instead of having to go to a third-party app and trying to look at what my meetings are, our schedule, create meetings and all that stuff. So cool, I'm glad. This yeah, so this way if you have like... Uh, it, it, if you have a fear of logging into all of the various different softwares and service platforms that you're paying monthly for, and you kind of just want it all consolidated in one place, then you just install the plugins, from calendar payments, sales pipeline, uh, proof. There's a whole bunch of them now. And it's just all neatly organized within your WordPress dashboard. So you can log in, do your content, do your email blast, check your meetings, all of that, all in your WordPress dashboard. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank yeah, you for that's, making that. <laughs> Let's check that out. That's what we want to do is just consol consolidate the marketing, the marketing, your marketing process. Awesome. Are there any new features that you guys are working on that um, are similar? Uh, well, right now we have, a, we have a couple that are actually built and just kind of pending to launch. Uh, we just built a company's extension. So if you do a lot of business, uh, not necessarily one-on-one, -on -one, but maybe one-on company, and you're, you're dealing with a company and several people within a company, you can organize your contacts based on which company that they work for. Uh, you can collect information about a specific company instead of just your typical contact record. Uh, so for, for uh, businesses that do a lot of business, again, one on company, then that would be extremely useful. We also have another integration coming out for Zero Bounce, uh, which is a list cleaner solution. So you'd oh, nice. be able to uh, maintain a very clean list so you're not harming your sender reputation by sending emails to spammy contact signups and whatnot. So uh, those are coming out. And I think there's one more that is being built right now. That's called, um, I, we have so much on the go. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. What's it called? Right. And we have a, we have a backup and restore solution coming as well. So uh, you'll be able to make sure that all of your groundhog data is like nice and secure in the event of a breach or whatnot. You just back up and you, ha you don't have to worry about it. Nice. When do you think that'll come out? All of these will probably come out within the next 30 days. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Very cool. So um, let's talk a little bit more about you now. Um, so those are the things that you're coming out with. Those are some of the things that you did come out with, but let's talk about you. I know you're also a co-host on WP Tonic. You still doing that? Yes, I am. Uh, I have been privileged to be able to work with Jonathan, Jonathan Dunwood, on his WP Tonic podcast. Uh, doing the podcast is great and learning. I've learned like a ton. I think the biggest benefit, though, that I've actually received uh, from co-hosting his podcast was being able to meet the people that come on. Uh, I know of several relationships that I've developed have come directly as a result of being on that show for some time. Spencer awesome. Foreman, uh, Chris Badgett, uh, 
uh, Brian from Kinsta. He's not at Kinsta anymore, but uh, because I met Brian at Kinsta, I was able to get Groundhog listed on their like top 14 CRMs for WordPress article, oh, uh, which has been which has been pretty sweet for us. I have to admit. Um, so I've just I've just been able to create a bunch of great relationships from from doing that podcast. Uh, and, and meeting some of the heavyweights of WordPress who all know Jonathan. And I get to be, hey, I know you're doing this cool thing and Groundhog does this cool thing. Is there an opportunity for us to work together? Um, I know that I've, I've met, I met Chris through the WP Tonic show, Chris Badgett, and he's the CEO over at Lyft LMS. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know we met him in person when we went down to Cobble Press, yeah. thrown by Chris Lemma. And so it, did you already know him before that? Before we I did, I, I, the, uh, the WP Tonic show was the first time I had met Chris. Okay. And it was, we were doing the panel of which we do on Fridays, which is where we, Jonathan kind of picks like five stories from the world of WordPress and other technological feats. And we kind of like discuss them in, in, in a, a CNN opinion panel style, really. <laughs> and uh, there's opinions yeah, are yeah. thrown around and names are said and things, but it's fun. It's a good time. But I met Chris on that panel. Very cool. And uh, How I, have to, I, I have to admit that we would not be like where we are. Like my company would not be where it is today uh, without some of the guidance that we've received, uh, not only from Chris, but from, from that, that whole kind of group of people, but especially Chris. Uh, Chris Badgett. Chris Badgett. Okay. Uh, we learned a lot from him about user experience, pricing, uh, how to kind of acknowledge, because he, al- he also runs a freemium business. Uh, and we run a freemium business. It's free plus paid add-ons and plans and whatnot. And he and he told me uh, like a, he literally said one sentence and it changed like my whole view on how freemium works as a business model. Uh, and it's that if you do run a free plus uh, free plus paid business, which is your typical freemium model, mm-hmm. uh, free is not a pricing plan. Oftentimes, when you go to pricing pages of companies that offer free plus paid. Mm-hmm. Free will be one of the columns in their pricing table. Right. right? Now awesome. that works for SaaS businesses that are not freemium. They have like their free tier, right? But, but as you grow, you end up having to pay. For example, HubSpot, SendGrid, Infusionsoft, they all have free have tiers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But that only works for like up to like maybe a thousand contacts or up to 500 emails a month. There's a very hard cap. For a freemium business like ours, it's not the same. Because you can use Groundhog for free unlimitedly because it's just self hosted of software. And the same goes for Lyft or LMS. And it's like when you're running a freemium WordPress company, you cannot acknowledge free as a pricing model. Free is merely like a method of distribution, which was kind of like a super eye-opener for me because we essentially just use free as a way to get it installed on people's sites. But, yeah. we, but we, we essentially act as though you have to pay. It's like there's no mention of free on our website, even though we, we provide a totally free service and free product, there's, you will never find a mention of it being free on our pricing page or on our homepage or anything. Uh, mm-hmm. We treat it as though as like we are like a premium company and we are a premium company. Mm-hmm. And uh, in order to get the most out of it, you do end up having to, to buy a license and, and, and pay the fees as it were. Um, but use, but, acknowledging free as merely just a method of distribution has literally like turned our company around in September. Uh, And in the month that we started doing that, we literally like doubled revenue and it was, it was, it was, it was ridiculous. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Wow. He's going to be coming on the show too. So I'm excited to get him on here. Um, So tell us a little bit more about like, like how that came about to get on Jonathan's show. Like how did that conversation start? He he invited me on his show for an interview as a guest first? as a guest okay as a guest and then uh, you were like spectacular and he's like why why don't why don't you just join me and be a co-host is well it was a- actually it was actually a is, is serendipitous the word that i use in this context i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh but i went on his show and it turned out that literally like the week i went into the show his regular co-host Mm. Uh, informed him that she was going on like a year tour around the world with her husband and family, which sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, but as a result, she would be able to do the show. So uh, I literally went on that show and he wanted to bring the show in a direction of going towards uh, marketing automation and, and interviewing people and talking to people about marketing strategies and digital marketing and, I obviously have a little bit of experience in yeah, in you're a shoe in for that for sure in that little world. So 
uh, he asked me to become a regular co-host on the show. And uh, as I think, I think he's happy with, <laughs> with my performance so far, but I'm even happier just because of everybody I was able to meet. But yeah, no, just, I just, I got an email in my inbox and it's like, Hey, listen, do you want to come on our show? And I'm uh, and at the time I was trying to get on a lot of podcasts, actually, that was kind of like my main marketing strategy at that point mm-hmm. was trying to get on other Same. people's, other people's lists and other people's mind and, and expand my audience through that method, uh, which was to, to a degree, pretty successful, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to, to it, tap into a lot of different people's, uh, a lot of different people's lists, including yours at the time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now, do you now? I mean, before we got on this call, you were mentioning that you're spending a lot of your time doing training for Groundhog. I talk a little bit about that, and then um, I do have a question to follow that one. So, yeah. uh, So, I promised I promised our list in December of 2019 that uh, Q1 of 2020 would focus on training and providing educational resources. Uh, We have a great product. Uh, and it works really, really well. Some people need a little bit more help than others in order to kind of like understand. Some people are at different levels and different stages of understanding how digital marketing works, how a sales funnel works, uh, email deliverability. Like we're all at different stages of of knowing that. I've been in this industry for like five years now. So I know a lot about the industry and I obviously have a little bit more knowledge than some people. Uh, but those, sometimes the software is built in a way for people with that knowledge and for people who don't have that knowledge, it can be a little bit, uh, a little bit of an uphill climb. So a lot of the training, I promised our list that we'd focus on providing more training and educational resources in Q1 to bring everybody up to speed. Uh, not necessarily make them experts. Uh, it takes a certain amount of time in order to kind of like accrue that level of knowledge, uh, but at least to give them like concrete instructional ways to build proven digital marketing strategies in a short period of time, even if you don't necessarily understand why it works 100% and why it is that the way it is and why certain things are, it's kind of like building Lego. It's kind of like just put the pieces together and I promise you at the end, you'll end up with the finished product. You have a castle Uh, at the end. You'll have a castle at the end. You don't know, you don't need to necessarily know why this piece fits in this piece exactly this way, but it will become clear if you just follow these steps. So I'm kind of like building these, uh, instructional how to's on on what exactly the strategy you need to implement for particular niches are so right now i 'm focusing on course creators mm. uh, we have a lot of course creators coming in to our community a lot of them are coming from the tutor LMS and lifter LMS and learn dash groups uh, again i 've been able to build relationships with like Chris so uh, a lot of traffic comes from from his organization to us when people are searching for marketing automation solutions. Uh, so what strategies would benefit someone who's creating courses uh, and creating courses for the first time, or if they already have courses, how can they kind of like 10 X mm-hmm. their current statistics by implementing successful marketing automation, improving marketing automation strategies. Uh, so Reduce that's when all that stuff, right? Reducing churn, increasing student engagement, increasing course completion rates. Like what strategies do you implement with marketing automation? And a lot of people like, well, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're creating videos like, well, this is exactly what you need to do. These are the strategies you need to implement. And these are the problems that they're solved. So for the course creators, just as an example, since we're talking about it, uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, increasing enrollment, increasing completion rates. And uh, I have it written behind me. Uh-oh. Your, when your head got closer, it like totally made everything white back there. Put your head back closer to uh-huh. your board. There we go. Now sc- scoot to the side. There we oh. go. There we go. <laughs> uh, so right. cor- yeah. cor- uh, increase course enrollment, uh, decrease course abandonment, and increase uh, overall a net course generation revenue. Uh, and the strategies that you kind of like used to do that are you have a... Uh, a uh, free lead magnet course strategy. And then uh, there's a specific funnel series that you can do to uh, decrease uh, course abandonment. So email reminders or text reminders to, for people who did not complete a course and how to implement that. And then how to upsell someone from one course to another in a relatively simple manner. Awesome. Now are you going to have templates with that too, by chance? or just- Yeah. So one, oh, okay. one of the unique features of Groundhog is that uh, you can export funnel templates 
Uh, so you can make a funnel on one site, you can export it, you can import it automatically onto any other site uh, with all of the email copy, the tags and anything, any configuration that's in that funnel, you can just pick up and move to another site. So we'll be able to not only show people how to implement and build these funnels, but they'll be able to skip a lot of the process and just download the template that we're going to provide them. And that's they awesome. can go ahead and drop that on their site and get up and running in like a couple hours. That is awesome. Very cool. Uh, one of the questions I did want to also ask you is on uh, your marketing. How are you promoting Groundhog now? It sounds like, I mean, you answer some of that right now through uh, affiliations with Lifter LMS and so forth. Um, is there, are you doing any advertising, doing any sort of like Facebook ads? We or? tried. Uh, we tried paid advertising back in like months two and three. We spent $3,000 and got zero return on investment for our money spent. We spent money on a sponsored post as well. And that generated a not significant amount of traffic. And I don't think any revenue came out of it either. Uh, honestly, the biggest marketing strategy to date that's been proven to deliver has been appearing on podcasts and mm. uh, especially some of the larger WordPress ones. Those get a lot of reach. And able being able to tap into uh, those uh, those markets uh, again, the just kind of the a lot of the relationships that I built, especially with you. We have a lot of WAS Pro people and WAS Pro customers as our own customers uh, using our WAS specific package uh, for those people. A lot of people from the Lifter LMS group end up on our on our list as well, simply because uh, we're well. I always show up in Chris's mastermind hours and. I get questions now in his in his own mastermind. So in the <laughs> lifter specific mastermind, I, if I show up, I get groundhog questions like during his thing, and that's that's kind of like how deeply integrated I've 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 become with them. Yeah, yeah, I've made I've I've inserted myself into their organization willingly or not. <laughs> that's uh, awesome. So. We I'm sure he appreciates that for sure. As added value, well, I certainly appreciate it. So if Chris is yeah. listening to this, thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, and yeah, there's, there's other course, there's other, uh, plugin developers and people that have been able to create relationships as well. And, uh, people will ask, you know, they'll go into their respective groups and they're going to ask, Hey, listen, I am looking to use a, or to invest in CRM and marketing automation. What do, what tool do you use? And we have customers and partners and, people like yourself just in various other groups and they're just like, Hey, you should check out Groundhog. And that's honestly been the, the strongest marketing strategy that we have. Uh, of course, that's kind of just like the, the outbound and the outreach marketing strategy. There's of course more marketing strategies as you actually get on the list <laughs> and, and the various different pieces of conversion tools and funnels that we employ in order to turn you from someone who's visited maybe a blog post on our blog or visit the homepage into becoming a paid customer. Yeah, uh, but that's kind of like that's that's the other half of the funnel, right? But the outreach has definitely just been relationships and and referral revenue, referral traffic. Very cool. And now the other question I had, and then we're getting close to wrapping it up here, is: Do you ever plan on actually doing your own podcast? Because now that you have that experience, is it something that you thought about in your own marketing? It is. Uh, I don't. I don't personally have a large enough list yet. Mm on the groundhog list is not would not be large enough in order to fully support that i don't think yet uh and i'm totally happy doing uh working with jonathan on, on yeah. building the, the the wp tonic list and that subscriber base and i think that's a and jonathan's been around for a really long time and knows a lot of people in the wordpress and has developed a lot of relationships for people who like come back yearly and give updates and and are willing to share a lot of he's their got knowledge. a great thing going for sure yeah and I'm, I'm i'm happy doing that for now maybe in the future i'm not certainly going to rule it out uh but i don't i don't think within the next year i'm going to be yeah. investing time in that uh the thing the thing about running a podcast is that's incredibly time consuming mm-hmm. like there's no like they're like you know uh I run or I do a small show with my girlfriend and we have a little podcast and mm-hmm. the amount of effort and time that goes into just doing that with her. Uh, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's really her thing. And then I like to, I come on and do all of the tech stuff and the audio editing and the recording and the, 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 the AV stuff, but it's an incredibly time consuming process. 
Uh, and, you know, each show takes several hours, again, to record, to edit, get the, the audio files all compressed and whatnot, write the content that goes along with it, get a translator, get, it, get the script done, and then posting that on the website, getting the images put together. And uh, right now, I, I, I appreciate the fact that Jonathan does all, all of that work. <laughs> you just have to show up <laughs> right. for an hour on Thursday and kind of just like talk for maybe i don't know 10 minutes as i ask questions and and deliberate and whatnot so i appreciate the fact that i don't have to put all of that extra work in every week yeah that is nice isn't it convenient for sure <laughs> <laughs> so it is convenient i kind of i kind of get the i get the the best part i get to meet everybody and i get to promote my product and i get to do that and i and all i have to do is show up for a week uh show up for an hour on thursdays so it's pretty so it's a good relationship yeah it sounds like it. i'm jealous <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe when we have more staff and there's someone who's like time is dedicated to maybe running that podcast and I only have to show up to my own podcast and only record and I have other people to do all that stuff. Maybe that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be the ideal situation, but we're not, we're not quite there yet. Yeah. That's, that's totally the ideal situation. Yeah. Well, very cool, man. I appreciate you coming on and just sharing who you are and where you came from and what you're working on. That's awesome. I know a lot of people um, just like to see what's going on, you know, inside of Groundhog and you're working on all that training. So they get to see how actually to use your product, but they don't really get to know you. So I'm glad to have you on. So thank you. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad I was able to have the opportunity to kind of just talk about goings on in my head and <laughs> origin <laughs> stories and all that fun stuff. I'll well, definitely have to do this again sometime. And for those that don't even know, you were actually episode one of Profiles. Uh, I don't know if it's been a year since we did that, but yeah, I'm six, six, eight months, something like that. Yeah, yeah it's been yeah. it's been a long, long while ago. Yeah, so I'm sure we'll have you on again. And again, yeah. thank you. We both come a long way since then. And we have, we really have. <laughs> I actually have a background now instead of like a pool table, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we have come a long ways, and we actually grown to get to know each other even more, like having met each other in person, which is really cool because you don't get to really do that a lot inside the WordPress community. Kyle Press 2020, and we better. I hope you're going. I hope yeah. I'm going. I have to try right. it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome to see each other there again. Oh, very cool, man. Well, thanks again. And um, I look forward to having you on again sometime. Yeah, okay. me too. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Take care.